So I've done a tutorial in the past about how to make triangle ends on alphas. We're essentially gonna be doing the same thing here, except when there's two of them and you're making them after a loop, it's a little bit different. So I'm gonna be explaining the process at the top and also the process at the bottom for what you wanna finish with triangle ends. So as of right now, I've got two halves of the bracelet. This one is a little scrunched up because actually I had to undo some knots, ignore that. And we've got two leading strings to make the triangle ends. One leading string on this side and then this leading string on this side. I'm choosing the leading string based on what string I used for the actual loop. These are just the two strings that come out of that. I mean, you can use whatever one, especially if they're all the same color as in my case. I'm just using the ones that come out of the loop because I think it's more convenient. So I've got 15 strings left in this bundle. If I had an even number, I would just divide it by two. So if I had 16, for example, I would just do eight and eight. But since I have 15, I'm gonna do seven, seven, and leave one in the middle. So let's separate that. And there we go, seven, one, and seven. So what I'm gonna do now is basically exactly what I showed you in that tutorial of how to make triangle ends for alphas. So you can watch that for more details if you want, because this tutorial isn't really about that. It's about specifically what to do when there's two of them. But I'm gonna give you a quick recap. Hello, slightly into the future, Marsha here. I'm cutting in because I forgot to mention something at the beginning of this video. It's important in which direction you start making your knots. Because you've got two leading strings, you need one of them to end up on the edge of your bracelet. Obviously, since mine ended up in the middle here, it's gonna be the other one. I want the other leading string for this triangle end to end up on the edge, so on the right side once I'm finished with the triangle end. However, the other one, which is this one, you probably wanna end up in the middle because it's easier to hide it when it's in the middle and not on the side. This one is more personal preference, but I think it's easier to hide it when it's in the middle. So this is what I did here. To figure out in which direction you need to start, you have to count your strings. So in this case, I've got one leading string here and 15 strings left. I'm gonna do the same thing as I did on the other side. I'm gonna separate into seven, one, and seven. So I've got seven, one, and seven. Now you need to figure out how many rows you're gonna have. And that's easy. The number of rows is just how many strings you have in one of these bundles. Since I have seven, that means I'm gonna have seven rows. If you have an odd number of rows, like I do here, the direction of your last row is gonna be the same as the direction of your first row. So if my first row is from right to left, my last row is also gonna be from right to left. And my leading string is gonna end up in the middle. I don't want that. So I'm gonna start by moving the leading string to this side so my first row can be from left to right. So my leading string ends up on the right side after I've done completing the rows. If you've got an even number of string, it's gonna be the opposite. So if you're starting going from left to right, then the last row will be from right to left. So figure out in which direction you wanna start the first row so that one of the strings ends up in the middle and one of them ends up on the edge. I'm gonna go back to my timeline now. So take your leading string. I wanna follow the straight edges technique, so I'm gonna do a backward forward knot on the left. A forward knot in the middle on this individual string. And then a forward backward knot on this right bundle. I'm then gonna grab one string from each bundle. So one string from the bundle on the right and one from the bundle on the left. So now there's six strings in each bundle and three strings individually. And I'm gonna go in the other direction, do a forward backward knot on this bundle. Then one knot on these three strings individually, a backward forward knot on this bundle. And I'm gonna continue doing that, taking one string out of each bundle, doing a backward forward knot on the bundle on the left, then doing forward knots on all of the strings in the center individually, and a forward backward knot on the bundle on the right, until I ran out of strings in the bundle, just like I did in my tutorial for the regular triangle ends. All right, so as I explained in the beginning of the video, which was actually just now, in my timeline, <laughs> I've moved the string to the left side, so the row that I'm doing is gonna go from left to right, so my string ends up on the right side. But essentially what I'm gonna do is another triangle end just on this side, and then once I've done that, I'll get back to you. And I'm once again in the situation where I'm running out of string, so make sure to make your strings extra long. I'm gonna insert a new one in the meantime. <laughs> All 
right, so now that that is done, I've got two leading strings, one coming off of here and one coming off from the side. I'm gonna tuck this one that's coming off from the center, the short one, just underneath the bracelet and out of the way. I'm gonna show you what to do with it later, but for now, you're just gonna use this leading string as normal and just connect the two triangle ends. Okay, so we just did the first row on that one. We're gonna have to connect them now, which is the part that I dislike the most <laughs> because it's messy. But we're gonna be careful here. Try to level them out, which is what I'm trying to do now, and connect them tightly, but carefully to not mess them up. There we go. Must say it's a bit easier with alphas than it is with normal patterns, but still be careful. And then just continue the row as normal. There you go. The first row is complete. It's still a little bit wonky because I just did one row connecting them, but you can already start making your pattern. I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna show you what to do with the string and how to finish the end. All right, so now I've got string sticking out of the top here and of the bottom here. They're sticking out, because we did forward backward knots, or backward forward knots, I can't remember, they're sticking out towards the center. Personally, I like to just cut them off. They're right there in the center. I just come as close as I can and I snip. And that's it. Some people like to use glue. I've seen people use PVA glue or something just to glue it on. Some people like to sew it on. Personally, I just snip. And that's it. That's how you do triangle ends for an alpha after a loop. And two triangle ends for the end as well. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer as many as I can. Before I go, I want to thank my patrons and especially my top supporters whose names are going to appear on screen right now. Thank you guys very much. I really, really appreciate it. If you also want to become a patron, there is a link in the description where you can sign up. If you want more content from me, you should follow me on Twitch where I go live. And if you can't always make it to Twitch, I have a Masha Streams channel on which I re-upload my Twitch streams that you can watch whenever you want. But in any case, thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!